Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies, my name is Brent. Today we're cleaning and restoring paintbrushes. We'll be looking at several different types of soaps and solvents, and we'll be looking at both natural hair and synthetic bristles. We're going to start with some nasty, unusable brushes and get them working again. We can see under the microscope that these are in terrible condition. I retired them years ago, and they've been in the back of my drawer ever since. These are beyond the reach of a gentle cleaning. These need a hard reset. Alright, so this is isopropyl alcohol, also known as IPA or rubbing alcohol. My bottle is 91%, and it's from the first aid aisle. IPA is useful as a cleaning solvent. I'm soaking it deep into the brush and moving things around. This does a good job of loosening up the dried paint. Some of the paint comes off in the liquid, and I was able to wipe most of the rest off onto a paper towel. There are lots of ways to clean paintbrushes. Alcohol is one of the more extreme options, but it sure is effective at getting rid of that dried paint. Now, these actually look like paintbrushes again. In just a moment, we'll check to see if they act like paintbrushes too. Okay, just so that we're on the same page, a paintbrush is made up of bristles which are glued into a metal ferrule. Dried paint can force the bristles apart and make it hard to keep a good point on the brush. Dried paint near or inside the ferrule causes the worst splitting and is the most difficult to clean. There are different types of brushes, and the biggest distinction is between natural hair bristles and synthetic plastic bristles. These brushes right here are natural hair, but we'll also try to recondition some synthetic brushes. After I cleaned out the dried paint, I was able to reform some nice looking points on these three brushes. Let's put them to work and see if they're able to keep their tips. I'm a mini painter, and I mostly work with water-based acrylic paint. I'm testing these brushes on these cute little characters from a game called Relic Blade. If I can make the minis look good, then I figure the restoration was a success. The large and small brush that I'm using are both from Army Painter. The medium-sized brush is an ancient Citadel detail brush from Games Workshop. There are lots of soaps and solvents out there that you can use to clean your brushes. I suspect that there will be people in the comments section talking about the best or the proper way to clean brushes. My philosophy is that there isn't a best way. There are a variety of options that'll work, and they all come with their own pros and cons. Some folks may tell us that IPA is too harsh or damages the brushes in some way. Well, let's talk it through. I think it's useful to ask the question, what is the worst that could happen? I ask that with 100% sincerity. What is the worst that can happen? Rubbing alcohol won't dissolve polyester taclon bristles, and it won't chemically denature natural hair bristles. IPA is probably also safe on the glue that holds the bristles in the ferrule. Of course, this depends on the glue, but I think a lot of companies use a two-part epoxy in the ferrules, and this is definitely safe from isopropyl alcohol. I've cleaned lots of brushes with IPA, and it hasn't macroscopically damaged any bristles or caused any of them to fall out. One real consideration for IPA is that it'll probably wash away some of the oils, conditioners, and moisturizers that are in the bristles. Greasy hair is different from clean hair, which is different from hair that's been conditioned. Brush cleaner normally contains some conditioner, so after the hard reset with IPA, I took these brushes and washed them a few times with Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. As you can see, these brushes are working pretty well, but they aren't perfect. The larger one keeps its point sometimes, and sometimes it splays out into a big ol' mess. But hey, considering how bad they were when we started, I am quite happy with how usable these are. Isopropyl alcohol is cheap and readily available. It is flammable, though. What's the worst that can happen? Well, a fire is the worst thing that could happen, so be careful. Let's look at some more options. Some people like to clean brushes with hand sanitizer. The stuff I have here is 70% ethanol. Ethanol and IPA are both small alcohol molecules with similar properties, and they both do a good job of cleaning dry acrylic paint. Some people prefer the gel consistency better than the liquid, but the results of cleaning with hand sanitizer are similar to using rubbing alcohol. These brushes that I'm cleaning now have synthetic bristles. I only had a couple of natural hair brushes that needed rehab but I have dozens and dozens of old synthetic brushes that need to be cleaned. Next up, this is Windsor & Newton Brush Cleaner and Restorer. I don't know exactly what's in here. The MSDS material safety data sheet for this product only lists a bit of ethanol as a dangerous component. 
but there are clearly some other greasy organic solvents involved. This brush cleaner even started to dissolve my polystyrene plastic cup. That makes it a little tricky to work with, but it does get paint out of the bristles. I also tried the recommended trick of letting the brushes soak for a couple of hours, and the vapors actually made the paint on the handles all sticky. I thought that was kind of annoying. Whatever is in this stuff also leaves behind a greasy residue. My verdict is that this stuff works, but it's not my favorite. In this video, I'm only testing options for water-based acrylic paints, but there are products out there for other types of paint as well. If I was using oils, I would try out some mineral spirits like this bottle of cleaner conditioner from Mona Lisa. Okay, I've got one more hard reset option. This is super clean. It's a powerful detergent in a high pH basic solution. This cleaning product is one of my go-tos for stripping paint off of old plastic models, so it's no surprise that it can also clean paintbrushes. A fun observation here is that the basic solution is actually taking the gold plating off of some of the steel ferrules. It's not destroying these synthetic bristles though, and that's the important thing. The real point here is that if you have some badly damaged brushes, there are a wide variety of cleaning products to help you get out all the dried paint and do a hard reset. Rubbing alcohol, ethanol, brush cleaner, and detergents are all options to do an aggressive deep clean. As long as you're following safety instructions, the worst that can happen is that a badly damaged brush remains badly damaged. Now if your brush is starting out in okay condition, then there are milder soaps on the market for day-to-day -day cleaning. Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver and Mona Lisa Pink Brush Soap are both popular choices. Prevention is always better than cure. In a perfect world, you'll be careful not to get paint up by the ferrule of your favorite brush. And after every painting session, you'll carefully clean the bristles, reform the point, and leave the brush in a horizontal position to dry. These specialty soaps are a gentle way to clean your brushes. They also include some moisturizers and conditioners that get deposited in the bristles. Get some soap on the brush and work it in there. Then rinse with water and let the brush dry. Another option is to leave the soap on the brush, reform the point, and let it dry soapy. Bristles have a bit of memory, so using the soap to hold the point in place overnight can't hurt. This also gives the bristles more time to absorb the moisturizers. Some people will even use human hair care products to condition the bristles and hold the point in shape. The tips of synthetic bristles are more fragile than natural hair, and well-used synthetic brushes tend to develop a hook or lose their point entirely. In a previous video, I showed this image. Natural hair bristles retain their shape but synthetic bristles are prone to kinks and breaks near the tip. Synthetic Taclon bristles are a polyester thermoplastic which are manufactured by extruding hot liquid plastic. It makes sense that heat can be used to modify their shape. Some people say that boiling water can help restore the point on synthetic brushes. Let's give it a try. Here's a dirty synthetic brush. I gave it a deep clean with rubbing alcohol. This cleans the paint out of the bristles, but the point is still hooked and gnarly. Now, let's dip it in hot water for 30 seconds and try to reform the point. I boiled this water in my microwave and then ran to turn on the camera as fast as I could. I live close to sea level, so this water is probably 97 or 98 degrees Celsius. After soaking the brush in hot water, I used my fingers to try to reform the point. The hope is that the bristles get a bit soft and melty and can be pulled back into a nice tip. After about four heat cycles like this, I took the brush back to the microscope, and here's what it looks like. Maybe it's a little bit better, but I honestly don't see a huge difference. Let's up the magnification and take an even closer look. I chose a couple of used synthetic brushes to sacrifice. I cut off some of their bristles to prepare some glass slides. This is the starting point. These individual bristles are showing some bad damage. I boiled water again, and I did a handful of hot water cycles to try to reform the remaining bristles into a point. I cut some more bristles off to prepare some more slides, and, well, most of them are still looking rough. If the individual bristles still look like this, then I don't have much hope that the brush can form a nice point. My conclusion is that the hot water trick doesn't always work very well. Maybe someday I'll experiment with a sand bath or an oil bath to get temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius, and maybe that'll give some better results. 
In the meantime, I've accepted that no brush lasts forever. Some things can be fixed, and some things can't. Hot water is probably useful as part of a cleaning regimen, but I have not been able to use it to restore kinked bristles. Okay, so what are my recommendations? First, take care of your brushes. Don't get paint up near the ferrule, wash them regularly with brush soap, and reform the point before you store them. Now, despite your best intentions, you may eventually wind up with some monstrous brushes like the ones from my collection. In that case, you can use a more aggressive cleaning product to do a hard reset and get the dry paint out of the bristles. Lots of stuff can work, but my current favorite is isopropyl alcohol. After a hard reset, it's logical to use a mild brush cleaner to recondition the bristles a bit. I was impressed with my trio of natural hair brushes that I rescued at the start of this video. I used exclusively those brushes to paint these Relic Blade minis, and I think they turned out pretty well. Brushes will sustain wear and tear over time, but you might be surprised at how much a bit of cleaning and reconditioning can really do. Giving new life to an old brush is extremely satisfying. I'm going to try to keep on learning over here, and as always, I'll let you know if I figure out anything neat. Well, that's about it for this time. Thanks so much for watching.